Hello and welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Lainey Shaughnessy and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to use your DWC Quickset Zeroing Tool. Okay, with your DWC Quickset Zeroing Tool you should have received the zeroing block, one bolt, a wire assembly with a gator clip on the end, and your quarter inch touch pin. Now the Quickset block has a recess on the bottom of it. Uh, this is what hooks on to the corner of your material and we work off the lower left corner of the material. The operator stands on the right side of the machine. The gator clip and wire simply connects to the touch plate, the zeroing tool touch plate of the digital wood carver. And we'll go ahead and just clamp that on. And with that clamped on, uh, the signal from the zeroing tool will transfer over to the block and we're ready to use the block. Now when it comes to the zeroing block, we have uh, different operations or different ways that we can use it. Uh, the primary way, whether we're using our touch pin or our router bit, uh, is that we'll be touching off on the lower level of the block. We can also touch off inside of the center circle to do a center circle finding uh, operation and we can also touch off on the upper lip to do an edge finding operation. Now primarily we are working on the lower level uh, when we are zeroing out our bit uh, for our X and Y and then it'll touch off on the top of the block for the Z. Now when it comes to uh, using the touch pin uh, you always touch off on the widest diameter of the router bit. Now in this case, I have here in my hand a 16th inch tapered ball nose. Now the widest diameter of this ball nose is the shank. So I can't get that bit low enough to touch off on the shank. So I'm going to substitute it with the quarter inch touch pin that came with the machine. Now, if I was using something like uh, this quarter inch V-bit, 60 degree V-bit here, uh, then the widest diameter is at that quarter inch and I can get down low enough to touch off with that bit so I don't need to substitute it with the touch pin. But you always touch off at the widest diameter of the bit. So if your V-bit has a half inch head or a three eighths inch head, you always touch off at the widest diameter of that bit. Now let's take a look at the touch tool functions inside the Planet CNC TNG motion controller software. Okay, inside Planet CNC TNG in mill mode, we should have a set of tools across the top of the uh, program. Uh, we have a button here that says eighth inch tool. We have a button that says three sixteenths. We have a button that says one quarter we have a button that says one half. Then we have our circle center finder button. We have a tool change button here and then we have a tool size. So when we are using a tapered ball nose bit and we have to substitute it with the touch pin or any tool that we have to substitute with the touch pin, the quarter inch touch pin, we're going to be using the tool change function. And with the tool change function, the quarter inch touch pin is going to touch off X and Y, and then it's going to move to a particular location. Uh, it's set at 15 inches down the table, one inch over, but you can specify a specific position that you want to go to. The machine is going to move to that position, and we're going to remove the quarter inch touch pin, and we're going to replace it with our tapered bit. And once we do that, uh, then we will unlock the pause function and it will go back and set the Z height for that bit. So let's take a look at that operation in action. Okay, so for the starting position of the zeroing function, we want our touch pin in our router or spindle. And the block itself is three inches by three inches, okay? Uh, from the corner, we want to be within an inch and a half of that corner for that start position. And from the distance of the block back, no more than an inch away. So that's kind of our starting area. 
Once we are in position, we want to be low enough that we can touch off on this lower lip here. And we want to make sure that our block is positioned on the corner of our material and it's hooked right on that corner. Once we are set up with the start position here, then we can go over and run the function in the software. Now in the software, I'm going to be using the tool change function because we are changing from the touch pin to the tapered bit. So it's our tool change function. So we're going to open this tool change up. And the first thing it's going to ask us, it says press OK to begin. We're going to click OK. And in here we have a dialog box, that, box that's asking for the tool or pin size. Okay. Uh, so our pin is a quarter of an inch. So we want 0 0.25 in here. And by default, it is already preset. So when we're ready, we can go ahead and press OK. Once we press OK, then the operation will begin. Now at the after the X and Y has touched off, the router uh, pin has raised up, and now it's asking us to specify a tool change location. Now by default, uh, it is set to move down the X axis 15 inches, uh, move over on the Y axis one inch, and raise the Z up an additional half an inch. You can specify a distance from where it's currently sitting, um, an absolute distance, you can specify exactly uh, what you want here to where you want to change your tool. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to six inches on the X. We're going to keep the one inch on the Y and the, we'll raise the additional half inch on the Z. So we'll go ahead and press OK. Once in position, I can go ahead and do my tool change, making sure to secure our tool fully because this is the tool we're going to be using to carve with. Once we have made that change, then we're going to go back into the software and you'll notice that when it moved to its location that our pause function is now paused. So we're going to unpause and it will complete the rest of the operation. Okay, once the operation is complete, the unit moves back out of the way. So we can now remove our touch plate. We can unclip our gator clip and put our touch plate away. And our touch block we can set aside on our shelf out of the way. To validate our touch off, uh, we can go ahead and bring the machine back to X, Y, and Z zero position in the software. And in the software, this icon here, move to zero, will bring all three axes back to X, Y, and Z zero. So we'll go ahead and click that function. Once we've verified our home position is set for the corner of our material, then we are all set to go to begin our carving operation. Now let's take a look at our other function tools here. Uh, the buttons for eighth inch tool, three sixteenths, quarter or half. If you're using a tool with that diameter, a straight tool with that diameter, uh, then you can use one of those functions. Let's go ahead and change over to our 60 degree quarter inch V-bit and we will run one of those operations. Now, if we have a tool that is not one of these diameters, that's a larger diameter, then we will use the tool size tool. Because in the tool size tool, 
we have the ability to specify our tool diameter uh, before we click OK to run that operation. So if your tool does not match eighth, three sixteenths, quarter, or half, then you will, if it's larger than any of that, then you'll specify your tool's size. Again, if it's a tapered tool, we want to use our touch pin and use that tool change function that you just saw happen. When we put our quarter inch uh, V-bit in, we will use our quarter inch tool and then we'll also show you how to use the circle center finder as well. So let's go ahead and change bits and get our 60 degree quarter inch V-bit in the router and run these two operations. Okay, so once we have our 60 degree quarter inch V-bit in the starting position of the zeroing function, then we can go ahead and run the operation in the software. So we'll start off with using the quarter inch tool because it is a quarter inch diameter. Let's go up to our quarter inch tool and click here. And then once we have our window open here, uh, it says press click OK to begin. So when we press OK, it will begin the operation. Once again, once that operation is complete, we can go ahead and remove our quick set block and put our touch plate away. Sliding the touch plate into the T-track of the table is the safest place to keep it. And you can set your block aside or put it on your shelf. And once again, we could verify our touch off by bringing the machine back to XYZ zero. Okay, in the software, let's go ahead and look at the circle center finder operation. So when it comes to the circle center finder operation, the center of this circle here is the corner of our material. When that block is in position, the center of that circle is set at the corner of the material. So we can bring our bit down into the circle here. It will touch off the four points of the circle to find the center and then it'll raise up, come over, and touch off the Z. Let's see that operation in motion. We'll put our block back in and get our connection back to our touch plate, and we'll go ahead and lower the bit down into that circle. Okay, so with our bit down into that circle, we can go ahead and open up our circle center finder operation, and all we do is press OK to begin. Once again, once the operation is complete, uh, the router will move back to a uh, safe position and we can remove our tool. So let's go ahead and put our touch plate back in the T-Track and move our quick set block out of the way. And once again, we can validate our zeroing position, our zero position, our home position to make sure that we had a good touch off. So once again in the software, we can come over here to move to zero and we can press that button and make sure that our home position is set. All right, well that wraps up how to use your DWC quick set zeroing tool. Remember, we always touch off on the widest diameter of the bit. If you can't get that wide diameter down for your touch off area, then substitute it with the touch pin that came with the DWC quick set. Uh, the tools are integrated into the Planet CNC TNG motion controller software. And if your diameter of your bit is wider than any of the tool functions that are 
pre-programmed in that eighth inch, three sixteenths, quarter and half, then you use the tool size function. Okay, well now the last thing that I want to say about the DWC quick set zeroing tool is that when we do a tool change operation in our carving, let's say that we're doing a carving where we're using a quarter inch end mill to do a pocket cut. And then when that pocket cut is complete, we're going to be changing to a V bit to do a V carving within that same project. When it comes to the tool change function, you do not rerun any one of those operations in the Planet CNC TNG motion controller software. You simply reconnect your block and get it back onto the corner of your material. You manually jog the machine over after you've changed to that tool for that second tool path. You jog the machine over to the top of your block. You come down manually and do a touch off. Now, the top of this block, to where it's sitting on your material, the thickness is one half an inch. You can put a set of calipers on it to validate that, but it should be 0 0.5. If it's a little bit different, then you wanna use the number based on what your caliper reading is, but it should be pretty much from the factory half an inch. Now, when that block is sitting back on your wood and we do have it connected to our little touch plate, we change our tool, we want to come over and bring it down. It'll stop automatically when it makes contact with the top of the block. And in our software, we're simply going to double click on our Z numbers and type in the 0 0.5 or whatever number you have calibered out for your block. But 0 0.5 should be the number. Uh, we'll hit enter to lock that in and then we'll raise up off the block put our block away, disconnect it from our touch tool, put our touch tool away, and we're ready to begin that operation, that second operation. So on a tool change on the same project, an actual tool change, not changing from your touch pin to a tapered bit for that initial setup, but on an actual tool change from file to file for the same job, end mill pocket cut to a V bit, V cut type of thing, we want to make sure that, that we manually come over to touch off the Z, just like I showed you in the software. So that would complete that touch off operation. We do not reset X and Y. We do not rerun any one of those operations uh, in the middle of a job. We're only setting the Z position for that new tool, that tool change. So we'll come down with our new tool and it'll stop on the top of that block we'll type in our 0.5 to set that height, bring it back up, put our block away, and we're ready to begin that second operation or that third operation. So during tool changes on the same project, you only touch off the Z. At the initial file, the beginning of that project is where you will set X, Y, and Z, where you will run those quick set operations. All right, I hope you found this helpful and useful to you in getting started with using your DWC Quick Set Zeroing Tool. Once again, my name is Laney Shaughnessy, and until next time, I'll see you soon.